So the NES version of Donkey Kong was a very good arcade port, but it made some sacrifices. This version omitted the Cement Factory stage and didn't feature most of the cutscenes that were in the arcade version. Even future releases of this game, such as in Donkey Kong Classics, would not include the Cement Factory stage or the extra cutscenes. So why didn't Nintendo include all four stages when there's plenty of NES titles that feature numerous levels? Well, let's take a look, and we'll also talk about an unbelievable update by Nintendo 20 plus years later. What's going on guys? It's Poger, coming at you with another video. So we hit a pretty good milestone. We hit 2,000 subscribers a couple days ago, which is actually pretty solid considering we were at 1,500, I believe, two weeks ago. Thank you so much for the support, and if you're new to the channel, thank you for being here. So we're going to be talking about the NES version of Donkey Kong and a surprising update that was made to it more than 20 years later by Nintendo. With that said, if you haven't already, feel free to check out my store. I did add a few more items. We have hats, water bottles, hoodies, t-shirts, and more. Just go to shop.poger.net. Secondly, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button right there. It only takes a quick second, but it helps the channel grow. Anyway, we're just gonna get right into it. You already know. In 1983, with the release of the Famicom in Japan, Nintendo prioritized having some of their arcade classics ported over to it. One of them was Donkey Kong, which was a well-done translation of the arcade version. For its time, it was impressive to see a game that looked pretty close to the arcade original. They're almost indistinguishable outside of some coloration differences. So while the Famicom version of Donkey Kong looked great in the graphics department, some sacrifices had to be made in order for it to be compatible with the Famicom. In the arcade version, there were four stages, one of them being the Cement Factory. Here, you have conveyor belts, and you have to avoid the cement pans that are moving across the screen. On paper, it seems like it wouldn't be too hard to include all four stages in its home console version. After all, think of all the NES games that have numerous stages. But at the time, Famicom cartridges only had 32 kilobytes of ROM space to work with. Hey, I said it right, guys. That's a decent amount for its time, but hard when you're trying to port an arcade title. So because there wasn't enough ROM space to fit all four stages, the Cement Factory had to be omitted from the home console release. Not only that, but most of the cutscenes from the arcade version were removed. Despite these changes though, this was still the best port of the game so far. Let's compare. The Atari 2600 version is missing two stages, including the Cement Factory, and the graphics here are much worse. The ColecoVision version looks a little better, and it features more stages, but it's still missing the Cement Factory level, and they couldn't even get the stages right that did make it on here. What happened to Stage 1? Looks a little different, don't you think? The Intellivision version is missing two stages, including the Cement Factory, and the first stage is messed up just like the ColecoVision one. Honestly, this is the worst version of Donkey Kong I've ever played. The Atari 7800 version is a decent translation, almost as good as the Famicom one. The graphics are closer to the arcade version, compared to what we just looked at anyway, and it features three out of the four stages. But like with the others, it's missing the Cement Factory level. These are all older consoles, many of which had much less than 32 kilobytes of ROM space, so it's not at all surprising that stages had to be cut. I'm not sure why the Cement Factory stage was the one that kept getting omitted, but if I were to guess, I assume the cement pans that are moving on the screen probably would have posed an issue on these older consoles because of sprite limitations. Now that we've seen the older versions, the Famicom one doesn't seem all that bad. So with the release of the NES, Donkey Kong would get a US release in 1986, which is almost three years after the Famicom version was released in Japan. So because the game is three years late, does this mean we're going to get an updated version that contains the Cement Factory level? Nope. We got the same exact version as Japan. It was a literal copy and paste. To be fair though, this was still very early in the console's lifespan, so there weren't a lot of hardware chips or mappers that existed yet. 
Despite the NES version being exactly the same as its Japanese counterpart, it was still the best version of Donkey Kong that existed on a home console. Two years later, Nintendo would release another Donkey Kong game in the US. This was a nice compilation that included the first two Donkey Kong games in one cartridge. So at this point, mappers were becoming more popular and therefore Nintendo was able to release games that contained more ROM space. As a result, they were able to cram both Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. onto a single cartridge. So if you think they didn't bother updating the original Donkey Kong in this one either, well, you would be right. This version still doesn't feature the Cement Factory level or the extra cutscenes. Could they have done it? Probably, but I can't complain about what we got instead. This is still a great game and the best home console version of Donkey Kong, and I doubt anyone really cared back then. Plus, we're getting two games in one collection in this case. So normally the story would end here, but more than 20 years later on the Nintendo Wii, we would receive a shocking update. To commemorate Mario's 25th anniversary, Nintendo released some limited edition consoles and games. In the US, we got a limited edition red Nintendo Wii that was bundled with new Super Mario Bros. Wii. Nintendo also released Super Mario All-Stars on the Wii, which I always thought was super lazy. They literally took the Super Nintendo version, made no other changes, and then threw it on a disc. In Europe though, they did something a little bit different. Their limited edition Wii was actually bundled with the NES version of Donkey Kong. But this wasn't just the regular version. To my surprise, this one actually included the Cement Factory level in some of the cutscenes. So after 20 plus years, we finally received an update for this game, called Donkey Kong Original Edition. So here's the big question, is this an actual NES ROM, or just a recreation that looks like the NES game but is really not? Well, someone did manage to extract the ROM file, and this actually works on real hardware. What you're looking at right now is the game running on the Mr. FPGA. So as we can see, the copyright screen is a little different at the bottom. Stage 1 is exactly the same, except when you reach the top, we actually see Donkey Kong carry Pauline up the ladder, unlike the original NES version. The Cement Factory level is similar to the arcade one, but Donkey Kong is completely stationary rather than moving back and forth like in the arcade original. I can see why, because in the NES version, Donkey Kong is part of the background graphics, while in the arcade version, he was a sprite. The NES version would have suffered from major slowdowns if they made Donkey Kong a sprite. The cement pans also make an appearance, and it does flicker when there's too many on screen. So this could be why other versions of the game omitted the cement factory stage completely. It's really cool that Nintendo went out of their way to update this game. There was no reason to do this, they could have just released the normal NES version, but instead they went above and beyond and actually modified the ROM. It's really cool that Nintendo did this. So with that said, would we also receive Donkey Kong Original Edition in the US? Nope. In fact, US consumers never had the option to purchase this game directly from Nintendo. There was only one way to legitimately obtain this game if you lived in the US. If you were a Nintendo Club member during a very short time frame, you could download the game as a promotion. But if you missed that very short time frame from October 1st, 2012 to January 6, 2013, you missed your chances of owning this game. And remember, this was only for Nintendo Club members too, so that probably weeds out 90% of people watching this video. But thankfully, it's not all bad news. There are other ways of playing this game. There's a bunch of reproduction cartridges of this game on eBay, or you can just play it on an EverDrive. Maybe it's wrong that we're obtaining this game in an unconventional way, but can you blame us? Nintendo certainly isn't making it easy for us to purchase it. For its time, the Famicom gave consumers the true arcade experience at home. The home console port of Donkey Kong looked nearly identical to its arcade counterpart, which is something no other console had done previously. 
But the Famicom had limitations, so some features had to be omitted from this version. Donkey Kong would be released a couple times in the US, but both of them were unchanged from the Japanese release. But in a shocking turn of events, we would receive an update that maybe nobody asked for, but I greatly appreciate. The distribution of this game could have been much better, and I really wish Donkey Kong Original Edition received a US release, but it's amazing that more than 20 years later, Nintendo finally updated this NES game. Hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, hit that like button. If you enjoy this type of content, hit the subscribe button for more content. Both of these things really help the channel grow. If you have anything to share, feel free to leave a comment. I read every single comment on this channel, and I'm pretty good at replying back. Anyway, have a good one.